Hi ho, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Hello. You know, as we wander through the tall grass here, mm -hmm. uh, I should mention we recently got a bunch of new subscribers. Oh yeah. So a big thank you to those folks. Yes, and thanks to our Patreon supporters oh, as yeah. well. Of mm -hmm. course, and everybody who watches the videos. Right. Very much appreciated. You know, I have no idea why people are subscribing, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but sooner or later, we're going to have to upload some quality content. <laughs> yes. I for think. now, for now, yeah. it's time to put together this Kermit the Frog diorama. All right. So I see that you have a weird little body uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you're making. <laughs> yeah. You surprised me with this. Mm -hmm. You were working on something else, mm -hmm. a secret project of yours. Yes. And you asked if I could felt a tiny little Kermit. Yes. And like a fool. Mm -hmm. You said yes. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the smallest Muppets I've ever felted. I know. And things get tricky at this size. For sure. Oh, also... Let me give you a needle felting tip. Oh, all right. Michelle hates felting <laughs> over an armature. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's in oh, oh, it's because of the needle and the metal. Yeah, right? right. Yeah, it's tedious because you're constantly focused on not breaking off the tip of your needle on the wire. But Kermit needs one so we can pose him. Well, I think you're doing a good job. Thank you. As I'm certain you felt I did a good job with this Kermit the Frog watercolor piece a little while ago. I did. I actually did. Good. I really like this. Good. Thanks. Of course, the watercolor piece is what inspired the felted Kermit you're mm. making, mm -hmm. and by extension, this whole entire diorama project. So it falls into this workflow we sort of developed lately, yeah. where we draw it, sculpt it, build it. Build it, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that workflow. Yeah, I do too. Uh, you see me shaping the base with some foam carving tools here, mm -hmm. and when I started this piece, it was just a test for pouring resin. Do you remember that? Right, yeah. We had, what, three different foam bases three. we built to pour resin on? Yeah. All laid out on the workbench? All on the workbench, mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, when I was using this rasp to shape the base, I think it was then I was thinking about the Kermit watercolor uh -huh. and thinking maybe, you know, this could be more than just a resin test yeah. piece. Maybe it could be a whole fully realized diorama build. All I'd really need is to convince someone to felt a tiny <laughs> Kermit the Frog. <laughs> So what's with that little yeah. gap thing? There's a hole in the bottom out of swamp. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went one car too far with the hot wire tool. You can't pour resin <laughs> into that. <laughs> no, you can't. You, you can't do that. You That's not right. I know. I know. So I, uh, I cut out a matching piece of foam. Okay. And I snapped it into place. I glued it in. And when that was dry, I covered the whole thing in Mod Podge. And that sealed it up pretty tight. Okay. And we didn't get any leaks, so I must have done something right. Yeah, no leaks. I think that, first, I'm fine with you turning a test piece into a mm. diorama project, but where that became an issue is the scale. Yeah. You know, I, I know it's not as large a base as we'd normally make for a diorama. Right. Which means you had to work much smaller than you usually do. The fingers were really tiny. Yeah. I know in a, another video, I dropped a tip about using a lollipop stick oh, yeah. to wind the fingers around, but Kermit's fingers were way too small to use that method, yeah. so I just rolled the wool between my fingers. You mean like the, like the money thing you do mm. with your fingertips? Yeah, right, like that little money motion okay. or the world's smallest violin, and then I attach them with a needle. Any felting tips for Kermit's head? Uh, not really. Okay. Just I made it in two parts, okay. like two halves of a walnut, then stuck them together. Because we talked about whether he'd be big enough to have an open mouth. Right. Or if you were just going to make him with a solid head with a closed smile. Yeah. And we thought he had to have an open mouth so he could look like he was like singing. He's singing. Exactly. Yeah. Good call. Back to the base. Uh, I have glued down some rocks here, and okay. now I'm gluing down some cheap artificial grass. And manage somehow not to glue your fingertips together with the CA glue. Yeah, the CA glue. Yeah. Well, almost. I, you know, I got some on my face oh, no. a few weeks ago, right? and I practically <laughs> had a panic attack. <laughs> I could see. Also, why. that stuff does not 
either it doesn't set as quickly as I remember, or I'm losing patience with every passing day. <laughs> so I grabbed some accelerator to speed up the process because I don't have all day oh, yeah. to stand around holding grass tufts in place. <laughs> Good idea. And then you took a little break and had some pudding? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, no, I mixed up some paint and some tile grout and gel medium to make a mud that mm. I could mash around the base of the grass to help it look more natural. And then I went over all of that with different washes of black and brown to try to blend it in. I know you're gluing down some, is that dirt or no. flocking or no. tea leaves? It's tea, yeah, it's tea leaves. You got it. Tea leaves. <laughs> so knowing originally this was just going to be a resin pour test, Yeah. were you always planning to flock it and put uh -huh. all that extra ground cover yeah. on it just oh. for the test? Yeah, I was always going to try to make it look like a little swamp. Okay. Uh, it was always going to be a fairly elaborate resin pour uh -huh. test. Yeah. I even added some static grass to make it more realistic. Right. But... I could have stopped there. Uh -huh. I didn't have to take you away from your work to <laughs> right. felt a tiny Muppet for me. Yeah. But, you know, it all kind of clicked together in my head uh -huh. while I was doing it. All the different projects were inspiring each other. And right. if I hadn't changed my plans at that point, then none of us would have ever gotten to see your tiny little Kermit. <laughs> there he is. There he is. And there's this little collar, which I found out <laughs> in the last Kermit video is not part right? of his body. Right. It's clothing. <laughs> yeah. So why then do you think... He never changes up the color. Oh, right. It's not easy being green. Why not spruce it up <laughs> with a splash of purple around the neck? <laughs> right? I don't know. And thank you for making some eyes out of clay. Oh, sure. I was going to felt them, but I really thought the different textures would yeah. make him look more Muppety. Yeah, right? Because it, it supports the idea that his body is a soft, plushy material and right. his eyes are... Were they ping pong balls? In real life? Or I think his they were. Eyes? Yeah. Okay. Rover once told him his eyes look like two ping pong balls floating in a sea of mildew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. I know. Ah, the resin. The resin. <laughs> Patreon supporters mm -hmm. have followed along with our mind-numbing posts <laughs> right. about learning to use resin. Yes. Our tools and materials, our test pieces. Uh -huh. But this is the first time we're doing it for the general public. Right. And there's a very specific reason I had you do the pouring. Because you didn't want to screw it up because on camera. Because I didn't want to screw it up on camera. Exactly. <laughs> right. But that's not the only reason. Another reason you were in charge of the resin pouring is because I had a banjo to put together. I like the way this banjo turned out. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something. Yeah? I'm shocked at how this banjo <laughs> turned out. This is my very first miniature musical instrument. Patreon supporters in certain tiers can go to our page right now mm -hmm. and see a more in-depth video on how I put this together. Right. But basically, the whole thing is made of foam, wood, clay, and string. So just like a real banjo. Just like a real banjo, exactly. <laughs> all right, let's put it all together. Oh, I guess I should have mentioned that log, but, you know, I, I sculpted a log. So self-explanatory. Right. And yeah, I guess I should have mentioned that Robin. Uh-huh. But you know, <laughs> I sculpted a Robin. Self-explanatory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's the old banjo. Nice. So let's take a look at this whole diorama. Nice swamp. Thanks. Is it a swamp? A good... Or I... is it maybe a basin? <laughs> what even is that? Could it be a small a lake? Basin. It's not a, no, it's not a lake. It's a foam and it's resin. <laughs> yeah, no. I think what you've built here mm. is what we call yes. a lagoon. I really don't think that it matters. <laughs> well, either way, take a look at these frogs. I'm looking at the frogs <laughs> and uh, I think you did a really good job. Oh, thank you. I, I think they look very muppety. Oh, good. And I'm glad you took the time to felt the individual fingers. Oh, yeah. Because he looks like he's playing that banjo. And nice job with the bass. Thanks. I like the way the grass turned out. It's not bad. Yeah. I like the log you sculpted, mm -hmm. the moss on there. And for something that was initially a test piece. A test piece. I think it turned out really nice. And the resin mm. seems to have fulfilled its purpose. 
Oh boy, was I nervous. Well, <laughs> you know, it's not super elaborate. It's just right. a simple pour, but it turned yeah. out good. Mm -hmm. Solid work. I like it. This was a good collaboration. Yeah. We tried a few new things yeah. that turned out pretty good. I agree. And I can't wait to work on the next one. Same. And I realized when I was editing the video, mm -hmm. not only does this diorama fit into that draw it, sculpt it, build it oh, workflow, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But it has wool sculpting, uh, clay sculpting, <laughs> and foam sculpting. All the sculpting. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff we do, anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, wood sculpting a little, I guess. Oh, yeah. If you can count it. Uh -huh. I can I'll count it. <laughs> I was cutting and sanding wood. Uh -huh. I was shaping wood. That's wood sculpting. Right. You know, some of the most impressive sculptures <laughs> in history are wood sculptures. You... Sand at a coffee stirrer. It counts. It all counts. <laughs> oh, no, it counts. I'm not it's saying it wood. doesn't count. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter whether it counts or not. <laughs> Bottom line, this resin pour test really went off the rails. <laughs> yes. But I like what we ended up with. Can't wait to see what our next test turns into. 